Good morning, good morning. This is Father Adam, and this will be an English reflection on the gospel for today. So go ahead and comment throughout the reflection because I'm able to see all of your comments here. Let me know if you can hear me. And thank you for joining me today. So wonderful to have all of you here with me. Hello, hello. Good to see all of you. So wonderful to come uh, joining uh, all of you for this Sunday. Let me read the gospel for this Sunday. This will be our reflection in English. And later on, I will do one in Spanish as well. The gospel is from Mark chapter 7. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned Jesus. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? Jesus responded, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, hello. So wonderful to be joining all of you this morning for this reflection in English on the gospel. Jesus is asking, as I put in the description there, what about the heart, asks Jesus. We all want to believe that we would all be happy and have a productive life if it wasn't for our unfortunate life circumstances or that which surrounds us, that which is outside of us. If it wasn't for my unhappy context or the externals of my life situation, everything would be just wonderful. In other words, the source of my unhappiness, we want to believe. The source of my unfulfillment, the source of the fact that I am joyless, it's all out there, outside of me, beyond me. And Jesus is saying today, no, it's in you. It's in here, inside of you. It's in your heart. You want to change your life? Change your heart, says Jesus. Change your heart in order to change your life. In other words, he's saying, stop blaming your externals. Stop always saying about people victimizing you. Stop focusing on the forces beyond your control that you think are the source of your unhappiness. Stop trying to have that which is outside of you influence your happiness. The source of your unhappiness is in you. The issue with why you are unhappy is your heart. 
It's your attitude. It's inside of you. I was ordained a priest in 2010 at the height of the uh, housing crash when the economy crashed at that time. And I was first assigned to the town of Sonoma in Northern California, uh, a very, very, very wealthy town surrounded by wineries. This is the Sonoma Napa Valley of the United States, uh, extremely uh, rich surroundings. Uh, and the housing crash caused many people to lose their home. They were foreclosed upon. And in one day, I met a lady who was all down and depressed. And she says, Father Adam, pray for me. My life is over as I know it. They've foreclosed on our home and we've lost our home and we will have to move into an apartment. I'm so depressed. I feel horrible. And I did feel horrible for her. And I said, I feel so sorry for you. She says, you know, I've had to take now all these antidepressants and I don't know what's going to happen. My life is over, she said. And at the same time, that very day, God slapped me. I met another lady, a member of the prayer group, the charismatic prayer group of the church. And I said to her, I said, how are you doing? And she says, well, you know, I'm okay. We we're going through having been foreclosed upon. We've lost our home. We're going to have to move into an apartment. And I looked at her and I said, I'm so sorry that this is happening to you, that you've lost your home. I feel so bad for you, I said. And she looks at me and she says, Father Adam, who cares about some home that I have had here on earth when God has a mansion prepared for me in heaven who cares about this home that I've had here when God has a mansion prepared for me in heaven? You see the difference between the two ladies? One was converted and one wasn't. One was born again hmm? through Jesus. Hmm? Jesus changed her heart. The source of her happiness was within her. She could live in an apartment or wherever and she could still be happy because she had Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus wants for each and every one of you. For me too. To change our attitude. You know, I will never forget also this lady who came to me saying, Father Adam, please help me with my alcoholic husband, she says. He won't change. He doesn't want to get help. He doesn't want to go to AA. He doesn't want to quit drinking. My husband doesn't want help, she said. How can I help him, she says. Tell me what to do. And I looked at her and I said, you know, your husband isn't the problem. It's you. Your husband isn't here right now. You have no control over your husband or his behavior. Your husband isn't there yet to where he has come to himself to see that he needs help. You have no control over your husband or his actions. But you do have control over your own actions and over your own behavior and over your own attitude. You can't change your husband, honey. Mm? I said to her, you cannot change your husband. Mm -hmm. Let me tell that to you all right now. You cannot change your husband. Uh -huh. You cannot change your wife. Mm -hmm. You cannot change your kids. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's my Southern attitude coming out. You didn't know I was from the South. And I am from the South. The South of Poland. <laughs> <clears throat> You cannot change the people around you, but you can change yourself. I told her, you cannot change your husband, but you can change your heart. You can't change his, but you can change your heart. You need to be the change you want to see in your life, in other words. Don't expect others to change your life for you. You change it for yourself. I told her, 
You have the power to establish boundaries and what you will and what you will not do. You have the power to get up and walk away. Huh? You have no obligation to remain in an abusive situation that isn't only abusing you, but is also abusing your children. And what is worse, you are enabling his behavior, giving him permission to go on as if everything is okay. Do you know what she ended up doing? Packing her things one day, getting an apartment, took her two kids and said, Sayonara, Arrivederci. Bye bye, Dovidzenia, adios. Uh huh. And the next day, when she did that, you know what happened? He was knocking on my door. Mm hmm. He says, Father Adam, what should I do? I need help. He said, I need help. Get yourself into an AA program, huh? You have no obligation to be in any situation or in any relationship where you are being abused. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. How many of you are unhappy with your marriage? What are you doing about it? I'm asking a question. What are you doing about it? How many of you are unhappy with your work? <laughs> How many of you are depressed? Anxious, or you are alone. Mm -hmm. You don't got no boyfriend. You don't got no girlfriend. You know you don't you you you're not married. And you're like, oh, I want somebody, but you're not doing anything about it. You know you don't like the church you go to. You're not growing spiritually, and you're not doing anything about it. You have a weight issue. Mm hmm. And you're not doing anything about it. You keep gambling. You have an alcohol addiction. The list could go on, right? And what do you keep saying? I hear this all the time. Father, my husband, he needs to change. Uh, my worker, my work, my co-workers. Uh, my children, everybody, you know, the government, every day. Huh? It's all out there, right? Huh? You know, my husband needs to change and then it will be great. No, you need to change. My co-workers need to change and then it will be fine and dandy in my life. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. You need to change or you need to change your work. Why not? You know, huh? you're depressed and down and anxious and you blame everyone for it and everything for it instead of looking at the mirror. Hmm? and trying to find ways to deal with it. Getting medication, getting counseling, addressing the underlying issue with your depression and anxiety. You want to have a partner in your life and you say, oh, I want God to send me someone. <gasps> oh. But you aren't doing a darn thing about it. You don't have a profile online. Come on now, you know, you're wasting time on Facebook, looking through Facebook feeds, you know, and all that. Should be setting up a profile, dating, yes, chatting, hello, hello, hello. Okay. You're not actively searching for someone. They ain't going to fall from heaven. You aren't growing in your church and yet you stay there. Not only that, you haven't done anything to change your church situation. You know, I'm not growing spiritually. This is not working for me. And you keep, you know, that's the definition of, of insanity. You know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing and expecting different results. And that's what many people do. And they think, you know, their, their life is going to change and they're going to get happy and they're going to get joy. Hello, hello. Listen to Jesus today. You know, you have a weight issue. I know something about that. I used to weigh 325 pounds. Mm hmm Yeah. And I thought that, you know, going to McDonald's, I used to go to McDonald's all the time and uh, buying the Big Macs. And then I said, but I'm going to get a 
Diet Coke. <laughs> I gotta cut down on the calories somewhere. Yeah, Big Macs, Big Fries, Extra Large, <laughs> Super Size Fries to Super Size Me, but then the Super Size Diet Coke. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have a weight issue and you keep eating the same thing. Ho-Ho's, Ding Dongs, and Twinkies, and you... And what do you think? It's gonna just melt off all by itself? You don't exercise, you have a gambling issue, and you aren't addressing it with Gamblers Anonymous or an alcohol issue with uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. You really don't wanna get better, let's, let's face it. All you wanna do is complain and feel sorry for yourself and have others feel sorry for you. Stop it. We are all caught in situations that we cannot change, but we can change ourselves and our attitude towards these situations. This is precisely what I did in joining the Polish National Catholic Church. I can't change the system which had me working in circumstances detrimental to my health. Knowing full well I needed a dry and arid climate for my well-being, which is why they originally sent me to Las Vegas. But then for various reasons, political, bureaucratic, you know, other reasons, I'm not going to get into them right now. You know, the powers that be could care less about me and my well-being. They don't care. So I need to care for myself. You understand? I have to care for myself, and so, so do you. I can't change their attitude, but I can change mine. Hmm? I, could, I, could change whether I, I could change whether I would continue to allow myself to be abused by a system. Hmm? As so, so could you. You have the power. The power is in you. I have all these people now saying, Father Adam, what about the fact that you promised to stay Roman Catholic for the rest of your life? How many wives and husbands who are abused and mistreated have the same thing said to them to keep them in abusive relationships that are not life-giving? I promise to be a priest for the rest of my life. And I am a priest. And I will always be a priest. I did not promise to remain in an abusive situation. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the same thing that is told to the wife who is abused in an abusive marriage. You took vows! You need to stay with him forever! Keep, keep being abused! How stupid! You have no obligation to remain in a situation that is abusive. Either you, you have no obligation to allow yourself to be abused. How many wives and husbands who are abused and mistreated have the same thing said to them that is now said to me? To keep them in abusive relationships that are not life-giving. These people who say this to me would rather have me be depressed, suicidal, unhealthy, unable to breathe, living in a situation where I am unhappy, unfulfilled, all because of man-made rules and regulations. Hello, hello! That's how people are. Stop listening to the people around you. Listen to your heart. You know what you need to do in order to be happy. You know, I will never forget, and I posted this last year, in February of 2020. Look through my Facebook feed. My very good friend that I knew from the time I was in the seminary, Last year in February, same age as me. Last year he was 35, a priest. He committed suicide. Same age as me. Ordained in the same year as me, 2010. He took a bunch of pills one night and swallowed them and didn't wake up the next morning. Before all of this, he went to his mother and said, I don't want to be a priest anymore, he told his mother. Because people become priests for various reasons. Not everybody that becomes a priest has a vocation. 
you know, there's family pressures and things that happen in young men's lives. He was very young when he went into the seminary. And he told his mother, he says, I don't want to be a priest anymore. And you know what she said to him? If you leave the priesthood, it will kill me, she said. If you leave the priesthood, she said, it will kill me. Well, it didn't kill her. It killed him. And at the funeral, they were all crying and wailing. You know, the same thing would happen with me. Mm Mm-hmm. All those people who right now are saying, oh, you needed to stay. You needed to stay. You know, you needed to stay and continue to allow yourself to be abused. You needed to stay. You needed to stay. That's the same thing that would happen. All of those people would show up at my funeral after I would have gotten to the point where I would commit suicide. Those same people would show up, maybe cry a little, and then move on with their life and forget about me, right? I needed to think about myself. And that's what I'm encouraging all of you to do as well. Think of yourself. What is the best for you? I needed to think about what is the best for me as a person because I am no good to anybody if I am not healthy inside. If I don't have my my psychological health, my emotional health, my spiritual health in order, I am no good to anybody as a human being, as a priest. And the same thing in your own life. After I would die suffocating, not being able to breathe, or eventually from all of the pressure that was put on me, you know, people would just cry a little and, you know, maybe say a Hail Mary over my casket and move on with my, with, you know, with their lives. Caring, they could care less about me. I need to care for myself, as do you. Stop thinking, in other words, about what people will say. To hell with that. I just wish that my friend last year who committed suicide February of last year, that he would have had that attitude that I came to. It took me a very long time for the Lord to work on my heart, to come to that attitude. I wish that he would have gotten to that point instead of taking his own life. To hell with that type of attitude about what people will think. You do not need their approval. You just need the Lord's approval. Oh my God in heaven. Mm. Do I have peace right now in my heart? Mm. You do what you need to do in order to be happy and fulfilled in life. Change your attitude. Stop thinking about what people will think. And in that way you will change your life. All And the people who really love you and care for you, and want the best for you, will stand with you, and by you. And the ones who won't, well, they weren't with you to begin with. Mm -hmm. As I'm finding out right now, in my own life. All the people who cared about the Roman Catholic Father Adam, uh, are now coming out of the woodworks, you know. They could care less. They don't care if I commit suicide or not, or if I'm depressed about, no. No, They're coming out of the woodworks. Mm -hmm. It was about something that I may have provided. It wasn't about me. They don't care about the person, but the people who really love me and the people who really love you will stand by you. And will want the best for you. And whether I'm a Roman Catholic priest or a Polish national Catholic priest, I'm still a priest. Hmm? And I'm still alive. Hello. Bringing happiness and hello, hello. Isn't that what counts? I mean, come on. You know, you're more worried about an institution, protecting an institution. That's the way it's been for centuries and especially in recent decades we have found out all of those who were all about protecting an institution could care less about people right you know who cares about the children being abused you know who cares it's all about protecting an institution huh? and positions and power hmm? not about people let's care about people it's about the people 
And the people who really love you will stand by you. So come out. Huh? Come into the light. Live in the truth. Hmm? Be transparent. If you've got issues, why not Sh show them? Huh? I show them and I'm fine. Huh? And I take a lot of uh, uh, flack for that. Believe me. I mean, I get attacked like nobody, right? I mean, just, <laughs> okay. All the people who care about whether I am a Roman priest or a Polish priest don't care about me. They care about my title or my position. But the people who love me and care for me could care less whether I am a Roman or a Polish priest. I'm a priest, the same as I was before July 20th when my incarnation date took place in the Polish National Catholic Church. My status as a priest hasn't changed. Even the Vatican confirms and affirms that. Hmm? You know, I went through so many friends of mine committing suicide in the seminary and in the priesthood. I want you to Google, if you can, Marcin Kozłowski, and you will find out. He was with me in the seminary. He's one of three seminarians when I was at Mandelein Seminary that took his life. Marcin Kozłowski hung himself in his room at Mandelein Seminary when I was there. After they told him, the seminary personnel, the rectors and the rector and the, the higher ups told him that he would be dismissed from the seminary because he couldn't pass the TOEFL test. You know, they went to Poland to recruit young men to come to the Archdiocese of Chicago to become priests and they lied to them because they told them they would be priests in, in, in the United States. And who doesn't want to come to the United States if you live in Poland, especially at that time? They lied to them. They promised them the world. And he left the seminary in Poland. And you know, in Poland, when you enter the seminary, automatically all of your family starts assuming you are a priest. Can you imagine the shame he felt? And when he got here, you know, the cultural change, not knowing the language, he was, he had so much pressure put on him. And he couldn't take it anymore, especially when they told him that he would be dismissed if he didn't pass an exam. And so he hung himself. Another seminarian threw himself from a building. It's all, you can Google all of this. I went through that period. He couldn't go back home and face his family in Poland. He took his own life. That's what shame does. That's what caring about the outside does. What will people think? Who cares? To hell with what people think. What God thinks, that's what matters. That type of an attitude kills people. I've seen it. I just gave you a bunch of examples, real examples that you can Google. Drop the shame. How many people are overweight? I was overweight for a very long time, weighing 325 pounds. They can't go to a gym or put on a bathing suit because of shame. You won't go get counseling as a couple. Because you're ashamed to admit it. You won't go to the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting or the Gamblers Anonymous meeting or the Overeaters Anonymous meeting. You won't go because you're ashamed to stand up and say that is the start of change in your life when you stand up and you admit to what you have in your life. You won't go into an addiction treatment program because of, 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 of shame. How many men won't go and get Viagra because they're ashamed? To admit that they have erectile dysfunction. I hear this all the time. I have to tell people. Yes. Even that. <laughs> they didn't tell me I was going to be counseling people about that. <laughs> it's all about shame. Drop it. How many people can't confess their sins because of shame? Or go to a Rachel's Vineyard retreat after you've had an abortion? Yeah, I've participated in many of those. It's very healing. If you've had an abortion, 
You need to go on a Rachel's Vineyard retreat. It will do you wonders for your soul. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go because you're ashamed. And it's killing you, but you won't go. You, won't, you don't want the help, in other words. You know, when Mother Teresa was asked, why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? They asked Mother Teresa. And you know what she said? I am trying to kill the Hitler inside of me. I do what I do, Mother Teresa said, because I am trying to kill the Hitler that is inside of me. Wow! Can you believe it? That's Mother Teresa saying that. In other words, we meet no evil intentions out there hmm? in the world that we first do not meet within ourselves. The evil we find in the world starts with us. Admit and confront your own evil. That's what Jesus is getting at this, this Sunday. You know I've been, you know that I have been dealing with um, this attacks in recent weeks, horrible, uh, with the diocese putting out these statements about me, total lies in recent weeks, attacking me very horribly, you know, trying to discredit me and trying to say that I'm not a priest. I am. I'm a Polish National Catholic priest, a member of the Buffalo Pittsburgh Diocese, recognized as a priest, as a valid Catholic priest by even the Vatican. Yes, I didn't join some rogue organization. It's a valid Catholic Church. I'm just as Catholic as I was before. I'm just not under the Roman jurisdiction. And they're calling me a former Catholic priest on the websites and blasting it all over everywhere. They're blatantly lying about me and my status. Not only that, the Diocese of Santa Rosa sent a note to the Archdiocese of Chicago who then put out a communication about me. And then, this is very hard for me to share, especially because my mom is behind me in the picture right there. And then my own mother got phone calls from priests attacking her. That's one thing when you attack me, but it's another thing when you attack my mother. Can you imagine? They even went after my own mother. You don't think that I'm angry? I mean, and it would be very easy for me to lash out and blast them all and tell them what I really think about them. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to take the high, high road, right? You know, and it's an internal battle, believe me. I'm trying to kill the Hitler in me. <laughs> getting attacked so horribly. I mean, it's just unreal, unreal. But then, you know, I would lower myself to their level, wouldn't I? It's taking, and I, I, I wrote something and then I took it down because, you know, I wrote it and I, I and it's, it, it's very hurtful. I'm very hurt. I am, I am extremely hurt. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, it's very hurtful, you know, when people are attacking you with lies. It, it hurts, doesn't it? You know, when your enemies go after you with blatant lies. But then when they go after your own mother, that's another issue. So I'm angry. But I'm not going to lower myself to their level. Because... Bitterness and resentment and hate is poison that you prepare for your enemies that you end up drinking yourself. That's why Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Pray for your enemies. Mm. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Mm. And that's what I'm trying to do. Otherwise, I'm going to lower myself to their level. 
Mm -hmm. It is taking all within me to not be bitter and resentful. And that's why I'm really praying and I need all of you to pray for me as well. I'm praying for them all. I'm trying to bless them. And the Lord is placing this immense peace in me as I feel sorry for them all. I do. This is how the Lord is healing my heart in the midst of all of these attacks. He's placed a lot of peace because I feel sorry for all of them because they would like what I have. They're jealous because I have Jesus and I have all of you. <laughs> And I've got my mother who loves me unconditionally and my grandmother and so many wonderful, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. So I feel sorry for them because they would like to have what Father Adam has. But for that, you know, they have to want to change themselves, not change me. <laughs> and so I, I can't want to change them. I have to want to change myself, okay? I, I, I can't want to kill the Hitler in them. I need to kill the Hitler inside of me. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, why aren't you commenting? Comment, please, and share this reflection because it's so powerful. I feel all this peace in me, you know? Hmm? I'm praying today, Lord, change me. Change my heart. Allow me to love all those people more. Change my attitude toward them. Allow me to keep praying, Jesus, in the, in the line of Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm? Change my attitude toward all the people who hate me and are cruel to me. Not change them, Lord, but change me. You know, it's so easy to feed the Hitler in us, isn't it? Don't give in to it. You know what G.K. Chesterton said? He was this uh, um, wonderful philosopher uh, that lived in uh, the early part of the last century in England, an English philosopher. And when once he was asked, what's wrong with the world? People asked him. And he replied by saying, when they said, what's wrong with the world? G.K. Chesterton said, me. That's what's wrong with the world, me. Look within. Hmm? Open up your heart for self-reflection. Not my husband, not my wife, not all my haters, but me. Huh? I'm the one who stands in need of change. Change my heart, oh God. Change me. Hello, hello. So wonderful to be with all of you today. It's so great to come to you and share this reflection with all of you. Uh, I'm actively uh, starting the parish, Divine Mercy uh, Catholic Parish here in Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas! And it will be located in the Meadows Mall area, not too far from the Springs Preserve. Um, and I will be placing more and more and more and more information on my Facebook page. I'm really, really, really busy trying to set everything up. And uh, uh, I'll be placing all of the information there. And once I have the parish all set up, we'll have a way for you to uh, contact me through the parish. Uh, and all of you living in Las Vegas, I hope that you will come where I will share some great smiles with all of you and some good news that I know you can use. We can all use some good news. And so, Divine Mercy Catholic Parish, Polish National Catholic Church in Las Vegas, coming to Las Vegas in the next two weeks. The first weekend that we will open will be the 11th and the 12th of September. And I will post all of the schedule there uh, for you. It will be uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. in English and Sunday at 11 a.m. in English for now. Okay, uh, and then I, I'll put the Spanish schedule on as well uh, later on. But all of this we will be announcing, and um, I'm really working super, super hard to get the parish started, and then you'll be able to visit. 
as well, those of you from other places, um, and make an appointment with me through the parish to talk about your issues because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to talk about your stuff. You know, I always love to, love to, love to talk to people. And uh, of course, Vegas is a, a big hub airport. So if you live in other places, you can, um, you can come. And I'm going to need all of your support, okay? I don't have any equipment right now to broadcast masses or anything and it's, uh, uh, because the equipment belonged to my former parish. So I'm going to need uh, to be fundraising for that um, in order to broadcast masses and Bible studies and other classes for all of you with some good news that I know you can use in your life always with great humor. Um, and go ahead and comment and let me know if, uh, if this reflection did something for you and uh, make sure you share it. Sharing, 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 okay? Sharing, sharing is caring, sharing is caring. So go ahead and share this reflection today and like my uh, Facebook page, put a like there, please, and share it with other people. My YouTube channel, subscribe to it. And on my website, adamkotas.com, go ahead there and subscribe to the website as well. And stay tuned, okay? And thank you for always being with me. I love you very much. You know that, right? And I know that all of you want me to be well. So, as I want the best for you. Blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mwah. Jesus, I trust in you.